ओके सो व्हाट इज हर्मेटिक लाइफ द लाइफ ऑफ मैन इज अ जर्नी एंड इट इज डिवाइडेड इनटू थ्री डिफरेंट स्टेजेस द फर्स्ट स्टेज इज ब्रह्मचर्य आश्रम ओके इन आश्रम व्यवस्था द फर्स्ट स्टेज इज फर्स्ट आश्रम इज ब्रह्मचर्य आश्रम सेकेंड वन इज गृहस्थ आश्रम एंड थर्ड वन इज सन्यास आश्रम ओके सम ऑफ यू मे बी ऑल ऑफ यू माइट बी थिंकिंग वे आर द वन फर्स्ट आश्रम गोज एक्चुअली अकॉर्डिंग टू जी एस घुरे देर आर ओनली थ्री ही विल टेल इट सो लेट सी हाउ ही हाउ ही डिफेंस आश्रम सिस्टम he he says that the brahmacharya ashram the first ashram is a journey towards knowledge okay because this is stimulating you directing you to go for <coughs> pursuit of knowledge because life without knowledge is full of darkness it is nothing you cannot live a life without knowledge you cannot live a meaningful life without having knowledge of the things around you okay so in hindu social system it is be uh, it is being given utmost importance that at early stage hmm, the uh, early stage of life is meant for gaining knowledge is meant for learning okay so first phase of your family hmm, you live your family first stage of your life in brahmacharya ashram you leave your family and you are a child you are supposed to get out of parent house hmm? and live in gurukul ashram live in gurukul and obtain all possible kind of knowledges you know once the knowledge is complete then he will come back home okay then he will come back home and he will be married and his duty as a grihasth as a house master starts and he enters into the grihasth ashram okay so for the uh, being capable to discharge the responsibilities of grihasth ashram first you have to earn knowledge you have to learn how to live your life in brahmacharya ashram okay so the grihasth ashram is very very and probably the most important part of the ashram system because this is one ashram in which you discharge your responsibility the various responsibilities to our society to our your family to our your children okay so grihasth ashram is carrying a very important place in hindu society because only a house master only a grihasth can feed to sanyasis only a house master can pay tax to the king only a house master can perform rituals the different rituals you know the rituals for dead ancestor the ritual of worshiping and different rituals only a house master can perform only a house master can participate in productive activity reproductive activity okay so uh, grihasthastra stimulates you to discharge your economic role political role social role cultural religious different kind of roles so uh, ashram vyavastha is giving more importance to grihasthastra okay because at this stage you perform your different responsibilities you, you primarily look after your children you are supposed to marry uh you have to ensure that your um, children are going uh, to get primarily you know uh, uh, suitable uh, uh, education uh, they are being suitably socialized according to the society okay once your social responsibilities are over okay consider you have discharged your social responsibilities now you think that you should be going for something moral ethical you will be going for salvation so you are going from 
एक्सन टू सेपरेशन इन गृह शास्त्रम यू है अक्वायर्ड मेनी थिंग यू है अक्वायर्ड मनी यू है अक्वायर्ड प्रॉपर्टी यू है अक्वायर्ड नेम टू योर सेल्फ यू हैव टू बी सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम देम एंड यू हैव टू गो इन टू द संन्यास शास्त्र वेयर यू विल लीव एवरीथिंग बिहाइंड एंड यू विल ओनली गो फॉर मोरल एथिकल थिंग यू विल गो फॉर वर्सिप यू विल गो फॉर सॉल्वेशन ओके सो द ब्यूटी ऑफ गृहस्थाश्रम इज दैट यू एक्वायर इन द ब्यूटी ऑफ संन्यास आश्रम इज दैट यू गेट सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम ऑल योर बिलोंगिंग ओके बट इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट थिंक लाइक यू हैव अर्न ऑल योर लाइफ यू हैव वर्क हार्ड टू अर्न एवरीथिंग एंड देन वन डे यू हैव टू लीव एवरीथिंग बिहाइंड यू हैव टू लीव एवरीथिंग फॉर फॉर एवर that is a very difficult process so the one pras ashram is a transitional ashram huh? from grihast to sanyas ashram it is a transitional ashram where you will learn the process of detachment uh, detachment separation okay which is the essence of sanyas ashram okay so in uh, one prast ashram you will slowly detach from your business slowly detach from your occupation slowly detach from your property your family hmm? uh, then you have to spend time in uh, uh, visiting pilgrimage centers huh? uh, hari kirtan you are listening hari kirtan you are trying to change your mind towards divinity hmm? from worldly things towards divinity you are trying to change your mind Hmm? then only you can be completely detached from this world and you can go to sanyasasra okay so one first uh, one trust is uh, a transition a transitional ashram okay so you see how many great gods are there three how many great qualities are there rajasik tamasik and satvik how many ashrams are there three ashrams are there brahmachar grihast and sanyas ashram okay so there are three ashram so we will uh, go further in the concept of triad now we will look into the meaning of purusharth purusharth huh? arth of purush arth of being a man the meaning of being a man what it is to be a man what it is to be in this world the pursarth the meaning of being in this world now we will understand this word pursarth so what is objective of our birth why we are born what is objective of our life you see that uh, what is the meaning behind uh, this birth in this world hmm? we are born to primarily fulfill three objectives dharm dharm arth oblik kaam arth oblik kaam and moksh three objectives dharm <coughs> arth and kaam are same and moksha so these are three basic objectives of the life for which we are born what is dharm dharm is applicable to both men and women okay don't get by purusharth purush mean men no purush mean person it is uh, applicable for both men and women so what is dharm dharm means duty not religion okay dharma means duty what kind of duty see just see the beauty of hindu society that how much discipline is there in hindu society see the sociological significance of this okay so what is dharm dharm is duty in dharm is always connected from one to another like dharm of husband pati is connected to dharm of duty of wife hmm? 
duty of wife is connected to duty of husband duty of king is connected to duty of subject duty of son is connected to duty of father or parents okay so what is the duty of husband if husband is fulfilling his duties effectively the wife must be uh, must also fulfill her duty but you know we are forgetting these values today nowadays we are forgetting these values today time we consider that uh, wife is not discharging her duty if a wife is discharging her duty the uh, husband is not discharging his duty because both have obligation towards each other okay so the husband duty is to primarily earn for family and wife also discharge her duty by giving birth to children nurturing them socializing them looking after the household thing so therefore both are discharging their responsibilities understand this that the duty of husband hmm, is not uh, separated from the duty of wife okay so duty should not be primarily sex or gender specific now see the dharm when we are talking about raj dharm the duty of a king what is the duty of king when a king will be performing his duties effectively the praja the subject will also be respecting their duties okay when putra will be discharging his duty towards father or parents they will also be doing the same thing uh, see what is happening nowadays that son is sending money to parents and thinking that uh, their duties are over but money cannot be a substitute for love and affection when uh, when uh, the son was in the primary days when he was a child uh, the parents took care of him give him all the love hmm, that he needed at that point of time but uh, when the uh, parents grow old the son is sending money nowadays and forgetting all his duties so these series of duties were nicely codified in the hindu dharm shastra you know so why we are born as human beings we are born as human beings because they are duties is specified for us wherever you go so the duties are connected with values and ethics like i told you in the case of son it is connected to ethics okay you see if king hmm, king is imposing tax that is his duty but if there are no ethics and morals huh, no values huh, like if he is hiking tax so much then the uh, rebellion in, uh, rebellion is inevitable so the duties are connected with uh, values and ethics okay so uh, be careful Uh, when the son, brother, or putri, or the parents, any one of them, or husband or wife, if they are not discharging their duties, the family will be splitting into pieces. Okay, if husband or wife, any one of them or both of them are not discharging their duties, it is it will be leading to divorce. Okay, so we are all supposed to primarily discharge our duties. if we are not uh, fulfilling our duties the uh, then crisis crisis is inevitable it will it will surely come and in hindu dharm shastra these duties are clearly codified the duty of king the duty of son the duty of uh, parents the duty of man so you see the duty of king see in the today's context what it is it is the good governance hmm? the public administration good good governance what it was called by gandhi ji as ram raj as ram raj when raja is performing his dharm his duty the uh, the praja will also be performing their dharm hmm? their duty okay so everybody should be doing their part everybody should be adhering to their dharm their duties okay teachers students all part of the society 
uh, every person in the society must be discharging their duties okay let's see now kaam and earth what is earth earth is making money what is kaam kaam is sexual gratification okay but in hindu dharm shastra it is said that sexual gratification the kaam is not meant for bodily pleasure okay kaam sex is a means progeny is the consequence okay so the people go for sexual relationship so that they can have offsprings hmm? they can make child hmm? so therefore kaam is not given much importance in case of hindu dharm shastra the way moksha or dharm is given importance the kaam is not given that importance okay so now see about the earth earth making money so your primary role is to fulfill dharm your duty and when you are discharging your dharm you get earth you make money and you are not using that money for yourself only therefore you are not using that money only for yourself huh that earth that you make you are spending on yourself and spending on others what mean others it means feeding to poor doing charity properly utilizing the earth that you have or you are giving hungry man food you are giving monasteries charity rishis and monks are living on you know your donation your money so you are not uh, you are using that earth to pay tax to the king to the state raja is getting that wealth doing welfare only behalf of your money only okay so without your earth the political system the society will not sustain religion will not survive monks and saint they will not survive hungry people will not survive they will not be getting their food so earth is very important so the basic purpose of life is to sustain and live which is done primarily through through mobilizing wealth so therefore be careful like in west the protestantism tells that the more money you have the less money you have hmm? you should strive for more accumulation of wealth hmm? going for more business expansion you should go for a uh, making business empire but hinduism tells that make earth and use it for the happiness of others hmm? use use it to feed hungry people use it for saint and disease okay so your life will become meaningful only when you are helping others so hindu value system it is saying that the wealth that you earn is made for your sustenance and for charity other kind activities that you are doing okay so that are done using earth now you go to kerala you go to tamil nadu you go to uttarakhand you go to north east you go to anywhere okay these values you will always get huh? so these are the common values that are holding indian societies together hmm? how many ashrams three ashrams you will get to know it in any part of the country how many great gods three great gods okay how many behavior uh, behavioral pattern how many behavioral qualities there are three so therefore this is known as triad okay triad this is the concept of triad see about the moksha what is moksha it is just not about salvation it is beyond that that okay what is moksha in hindu culture we 
uh, we perceive that every person who is born is form of God. It carries certain divinity in it. Okay. So when it comes to earth, it fulfills its dharma duty. And at one time, every creation had to be destroyed. So moksha is that after the destruction of this body, hmm, the soul will go to the, the supreme divine being, the God. Okay. So this is moksha. That you fulfill all your duties in this world. Now, you will become that what you were before. Hmm? <coughs> you came from God, you will go to God. Okay? You came from God, you were separated from God. Now, you will be meeting to the God. You will be, you will be meeting to the divinity. So, this is moksha. 